Yes. So shout out to everyone here for coming um, to this announcement. It's long overdue on our side. Um, it's been a bit of a hectic uh, week or two for us as we did a lot of postmortem on our side to figure out what really happened. And that's really the, the purpose of this announcement is to talk about um, uh, the changes that went through last week, <clears throat> um, what happened, how we're moving forward, where we're going, um, how we're fixing what happened, um, and how we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen again, really. So from the top, I suppose. I think that BitTensor had a, I think by analogy, we had a, like a 1910 standard oil event happen in our, in our network. Um, we had a monopolistic takeover of the mining side, uh, and this put us into a really bad position. <clears throat> Everyone here is interested in this intersection between markets and machine learning and the power of that intersection. Um, and I think that I really want to make the point here that optimistically, we showcased that over the last three weeks, especially within the prompting network. We saw markets in action. We saw them fail as markets, um, but they failed because of the way <clears throat> that markets are able to totally monopolize and just destroy anything that gets in their way. So, so what really happened? Um, I think from the top, there was, from our analysis, there was two major leaks in BitTensor's incentive mechanism that caused the network to saturate. And I'll get to why the saturation was bad a little bit later, but I'll just talk about um, what those two leaks were. Um, and then later on, I'll, I'll talk about how we're fixing them. <clears throat> but the, the first leak was something that we'd been, we'd been aware about for a while. Um, and that was the proof of work registration. Now, it's, it's been a thorn in our side for a really long time. Um, the proof of work registration exists to uh, act as a Sybil re resistant mechanism to select who can take slots in BitTensor. So for people that have been here for a very long time, um, it started at 10 million uh, and it's now in the you know hundreds, if not thousands of trillions, quadrillion range. <clears throat> the proof of work um, has been here for a while and it doesn't really add much to BitTensor as a whole as to the network except to limit people's entry into the system. So when back in um, back in March, we discovered that there was effectively <clears throat> a market breakdown because some people were able to access com computational, computational power uh, that others couldn't um, to register hotkeys using proof of work. We don't really know how, how they were doing that, um, but they were doing it in such a way that it made it very, very uncompetitive for people to, to compete in the system um, just by bringing in, say, you know, a set of A100s. <clears throat> now, everyone here knows about that. If you don't know about it, you haven't been mining. Proof of work has obviously been a really big uh, thing. Um, but what we discovered over the last little, <clears throat> the last few, <laughs> yeah, genius. <laughs> what we discovered over the last few weeks was that um, not only were there some people that had access to um, computation, computational power that others didn't. I mean, and this this is all part of a market, right? This is part of BitTensor, the ability to extract resources from the web and use them into the system. So at, at this point, it's not such an issue, except that um, our proof of work registration process, we've learned, was about 50 times slower than what people had uh, managed to hack. You could call it a hack, right? or you could call it an optimization. And uh, if you're capable of getting a 50x speed increase on your proof of work mixed with a large data center, uh, you effectively own the entrance into BitTensor. And, and that's a poor piece of the story of what happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, effectively, we had uh, an insider in the pro proof of work. They had access to computational and algorithmic power that other people did not and were able to leverage that in a way that, that took out the majority of the network. When we introduced the proof of work, um, sorry, when we introduced the burn registration, we thought we could mitigate some of the advantages um, caused by having that proof of work advantage. <clears throat> but what it eventually did was just drive the price up for the, the burn register so that it was not competitive for people to do burn registers. Um, and, and still, the people that had access to the POW um, hacks could just compete. BitTensor is not a proof of work 
network. It never should have been. So I think this is a good you know, time to speak about the, our first decision is that we're going to remove the proof of work or we're going to suggest the removing of the proof of work from BitTensor so that people have um, an even footing on registrations through Burn Register. When we first introduced proof of work, the reason we did it was because we wanted there to be no gatekeepers to BitTensor. That means you didn't need to talk to anybody to get tokens. There was no tokens out there uh, in existence. And so you would have really needed, there was no market to buy it. And so we needed um, a mechanism that we could use that 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 um, was not permissioned in any way. So we used, we needed the proof of work at the beginning of of this project, but now things have evolved and I, I really think that, that we don't. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to make these changes at the end. But that's the first point. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so what happened? What happened next? It wasn't just the proof of work. There's a couple people that had access to it, but <clears throat> the the innovation um, that that the miners and I'm going to call this an innovation. Um, some people would say it, it's an attack. Some people say it was a cabalistic behavior. Some people would say it's an exploit. Uh, it's very difficult to determine exactly. Um, because we're working in a an incentivized market, we're in Web three. Code is law. What what the 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 monopolizers had managed to do was take our base miner um, and expand upon it, and make it a lot faster. So this is a bit embarrassing for for myself because I wrote the the base miner for BitTensor, uh, and within the space of three weeks, um, the people uh, inside this network uh, had had immediately ripped it to shreds and built a much better one. Um, now, at the end of this call, we're actually going to show this, the code. And it's not actually not that complex, but but it's just much better than what we had uh, been passing out as the miners. So the people that were participating, coming to BitTensor and, and running the core, you could say like template, we should definitely call them template example miners at this point because... Um, um, because now if you're not running um, something that's more sophisticated, you can't compete. It's what we saw over the last um, few weeks. So this this new um, miner, what it was able to do uh, was leverage uh, a set of models behind numerous endpoints, which is something that we know people do, um, in a mixtures manner. So they would select the endpoint to query uh, depending on the request. So that was an intelligent innovation and exploit. You could say it is an exploit. I would say it's an, a bit of an innovation on the system. Uh, and they were also able to find a response to any query, even if they timed out, that did fairly well on our reward model. So not, not perfectly, but well enough that they could never not respond to a query. So this put them, these two innovations alone, uh, put them far ahead, anybody who was not um, mining with those changes. Um, that plus the proof of work allowed them to dominate the entire network. So by the time we were monitoring this for a while, it looked like the the miners had 50%, 60%. Looks like they'd, they'd actually started the register. They'd already registered many keys on the network by um, before emissions were dropped into the system. And uh, when we decided to take down the network, the decision was made <clears throat> by myself and others at OpenTensor um, not to take on the network, but to reduce emissions, to give us uh, a breather and to focus on breaking this monopoly. And then why did we need to do that? We needed to do that um, because with uh, such a stacking and concentration of mining power in the hands of a few miners, um, some of the other more complex uh, mechanisms for introducing, for, for rewarding and validating these miners was breaking down. And we really believed that there was uh, now strong economies of scale on the mining, that mining ball, you could say, or collusion. A little bit like, say, a Standard Oil in 1910 in the United States that, that owned all the railways and, and therefore it could t dominate 90% of the oil um, extraction in the United States. It's a little bit similar to that. And, you know, since we're working with markets here, I think that um, it's important to realize um, as market participants and as engineers, <clears throat> we need to step in occasionally to break up um, pollution uh, and, and introduce a more effective and efficient market mechanism. <clears throat> now, we know that there is a lot of people in this community that are very angry about what happened. And I think that the anger stems from, in many ways, a confusion about ha what happened. Um, and But reasonably, it's, it's upsetting when this kind of thing happens. 
um, and we take, uh, as mechanism designers, we take a lot of responsibility as we take as much as we can. Because at the end of the day, the only way that BitTensor will succeed as a network is if the mechanism is working properly. If there are no holes, <clears throat> like the ability for a miner to respond, a pretty good response that actually could p com compete with others, uh, other responses um, during a timeout um, that that simply uh, cannot be detected. And and so one of the things that that we've done over the last week is focus primarily on why that that was the case and how that occurred in the reward structure of BitTensor. And we know how that happened. Um, this is an excellent question was the the attack. It's very brilliant. Um, and, you know, the solution is to basically expand the reward landscape to make it more robust and actually check for relevance when doing the scoring. So on when we release emissions, again, I'm going to talk about that a bit later. I don't want to, <clears throat> to go too soon, but um, uh, we know that this this uh, approach will no longer be effective um, and and miners will be having to run models in order to respond so that's that's a that's a huge thing and this is something we probably could have done um, um, just in the last week however <clears throat> we with an almost a 95 percent saturation on the mining side um, we we believe that we wouldn't be able to move fast enough so we've needed this time to really introduce these changes what else are we changing um, the another innovation or exploit depends how you look about look at it that the the collusion the the team that had taken over the network was applying was um uh, a caching system um and this was possible because our data set was not generating enough nuance and randomness in sorry not enough randomness in its synthetic data generation um so it was really it was very easy for people to apply um a standard caching system over responses and respond really very quickly uh, not only that, but but to to beforehand compute the best responses to every single possible query. So this this put everybody at a disadvantage that was not applying that strategy as well. <clears throat> um, and so the way we're fixing this is is really to just drive synthetic data generation um, to the moon. So we're moving from a 40 gigabyte data set to 108 gigabyte data set on the the um, the validator side, and then we're multiplying that by um, a randomness generator <clears throat> using Wikipedia topics and categories. Um, and also we're running the sequential co um, context question answering sequence um, by K steps of times five. So what this does is it expands the number of potentially unique re requests that can go to miners um, exponentially to the power of K. So that's that's huge. And we really we really believe that this, this is going to um, make this sort of naive attack uh, <clears throat> not possible. But of course, we're going to be monitoring this over the time, over time. And, and one of the things we're going to do is we're going to be increasing the registration rate over the next little while so that there'll be more churn in the network and people can get in while this is, this change is, is coming in. So there's much more to come. And I think the best way to understand these fixes, it's, it's hard to just speak them out right now. Um, the best way to understand them is to, is to read the, the validator code yourself. Um, and we're, we're always looking for white hats, people that can take a look at our code base and, and come to us directly. So one of the breakdowns that happened um, was that there were people out there in the community um, that were telling us uh, that there was an issue that but it was not that signal was not coming through. So we've, we've set up a team um, to work uh, as white hats and also to communicate with the community and pull that information up to the developers of, of BitTensor so that we can better respond to what's happening. So that's 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 I mean I think the fix and you know what happened but but more than just adding a fix and more than understanding the problem um, we've also decided um, internally that it really is time that this um, change in in the emission um, was something that that we can't make on our own um, it affects too many people um, and it is integral to the running of uh, bit tensor. It's really the question of should emissions come up and should emissions go down is a question that everyone should be able to participate in. And and we've been speaking at length about uh, introducing an autonomous organization into bit tensor. Um, we felt that this was the perfect time to do that. So we are actually going to be running this emission increase as a DAO vote. Uh, we've been working on this for months and we're really excited to announce that we're going to be doing a DAO vote. Um, so people can participate in this by 
delegating to the top 12 um, delegates based on their voting. Um, the top 12 delegates will have the opportunity, ranked in stake, <clears throat> will have the opportunity to to select whether or not the emission will be increased on this Friday. So that finally answers another one of people's questions. When is the mission coming back, back in? Um, we're going to try to move as quickly as possible. Um, we're going to move to we're going to move a motion to increase emission on Friday this week. Yeah, uh, uh, Halfish says why why twelve and and what if it's a draw? As we're growing as a community, um, we're moving away from a core executive control of BitTensor towards one in which there is um, more decentralized ownership and and executive control. <clears throat> but we want to do this slowly. We want to see how things mature. If we move too quickly, um, we can. We've seen what can happen. Um, so we started with twelve because we think it's a it's a very Sybil resistant number right now. We know the top twelve validators. I think most people in this community do, uh, and and we can pilot this mechanism for a DAO um, using the 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 top twelve as 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 having singular votes. <clears throat> most people know them, um, and and we can see how this goes, and and we can turn back if need be. But I think that the it's very important for Alan and I to to really let go uh, from to of total control of of the system and open it up to more people, um, so that we can have uh, more dem democracy in in the system. Uh, we know that we're fallible. I've always known that I'm fallible, um, and we can make really bad decisions, and we shouldn't be able to. Um, it's not that uh, we're good; it's that we can't be evil. And I think uh, this is the first stage for that. So. Yeah, I, I think I'll I'll hand the mic here to to Ala. Maybe Ala, if you have some extra points, and we can. No, I've, I've mainly been uh, kind of keeping up with folks in the chat. Um, yeah, I think as Khan said, um, we need to focus on this fix, and we need to focus specifically on how we're going to move forward from here. Because at the end of the day, you know, we are only as strong as our consensus mechanism. If the consensus mechanism is not well reinforced and not good enough, then really we're just going to keep running into this issue over and over and over. Someone else is going to catch up with some other clever way to, you know, to 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 uh, tackle the the reward that we created and exploit it in some way. So um, in some ways, I kind of already said this in the chat, in some ways it's good that it happened now and not later. Because if I'd had a month later when we're in the mainstream, it would have been very significantly more catastrophic than it has been today. And so um, part of the lessons learned is to really focus on our foundations first before moving upwards. So depth before breadth for the time being. Yeah, I'll, I'll reiterate, reiterate this point that um, there's a silver lining to this, which is that what we saw um, from this attack, you might say, on the network or this dominance in the network was we saw... Um, people that were working day in and day out to optimize against the incentive mechanism way faster than we could as engineers. And I think that's really the power that we're using as a collective. We're taking advantage of people's ability to um, innovate. Uh, a 50x increase in the proof of work you know, shows that we shouldn't use the proof of work um, because it's not what we're, we want people to optimize, but it also showcases uh, what can be done um, by att attracting um, innovation under an Ethan incentive mechanism. So that's, that's, that's a, perhaps a silver lining, but I don't want to um, belay that point for too long. Um, so the, when will the fix be implemented? I mean, there's uh, the fix and the updated validator, um, they're actually already um, just being tested. So it, it's going to be done by Friday, um, depending on the, the vote. Uh, we can't really say for sure. So the, the vote will be going out tomorrow um, evening, and it will last for, I believe, three days. Um, we'll, we'll give you guys the block count um, tomorrow and more information about that and how you can register. So we're up, up, updating BitTensor with the new CLI that allows you to vote. Um, there'll be uh, what we're calling the Senate, which is the members of the the delegates, which have the the the, the most amount of stake and have also elected themselves to participate in the Senate. So not everyone has to do that. And I think that's good. So it's just the people that that, that really truly want to participate in the democracy of, of, of BitTensor can actually enter the system this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, Unit 10 is asking, 
will this vote look what will this vote look like in terms of technical aspect? Is it a transaction by a BitTensor plea or an extrinsic that should be submitted to subtensor? Um, um, it is as, it's both. Yeah. It's a transaction via the BitTensor plea, which is also an extrinsic that is submitted to subtensor. So it's just you submit the extrinsic through the CLI. Uh, you could also perform the voting um, using the polka.js frontend uh, explorer. That works as well. Um, in fact, uh, that's what we'll be using. But people can, will be able to view the ongoing votes, the mechanism changes, so you can list the proposals with the CLI. So you do a BT CLI list proposals and it will show all of the proposals. And the, these, this is everything from um, the decision to remove the proof of work uh, to the decision to increase the emission. Um, it's a very simple lever, the decision to increase or decrease emission. And I think it's something that the community needs to be able to decide to do. If we can't turn the machine off, then, then, uh, when the mechanism is not working, um, I, I think that, that what power do we have really, um, is the, in the DAO. So, uh, but for most of the decisions around the, the modulation of the registration rates and the adjustment intervals and things that are very specific to a subnetwork, um, not at the highest level. Um, we are going to be uh, running still from the foundation until we can figure out how to decentralize that um, to specific teams that are running the subnetworks. Um, our goal is to actually decentralize the teams running the subnetwork so that so that people that have ideas for subnetworks and, and for, for mechanisms can come to us and we can actually give them control over a particular mechanism plus um, we as the DAO can decide whether or not we're going to inject emission um, into that mechanism based on its performance so we, our goal is to put ourselves as the foundation the 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 core team at the foundation underneath everything that's being done by the DAO and everything that's done uh, in the mechanism itself so that we are being selected as well mm -hmm. uh, just to expand a little bit on what Klaus was saying um, Mr. Cole I do see your concerns and I'm sure everyone else uh, would have a similar concern um, this setup right now um, is effectively a pilot project for um, trying out the DAO. We want to see how this is going to work, how the commission is going to react, how the system is going to work. And we also want the community to start responding and start to really get engaged in these decisions. We, we don't like that we are the ones making the only decisions because we don't feel that that is fair either, especially getting to the point that BitTensor has grown as a project. So um, as of this point, we are um, handing some keys over to the community to be able to help us make these decisions. But as Khan said, for the more crucial choices, we still retain control until we can effectively be confident that we can give it to the rest and you know allow the community to participate even more in that sense. So we're building what we're building, Mr. Cole, is a, is a bicameral system um, so that there are effectively two houses and the one house is the, the delegates uh, and they have veto power on the proposals pr that that we put forward so there still is an executive branch uh, we still are very much in control but we're piloting this reduction um to to the community uh, the the other aspect the other house eventually will disappear but but not until we're ready and we're confident that 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 it's there are people there that can run uh that aspect yeah yeah no worries mr Cole. Um, and yeah, so there'll be up to 12 delegates that can participate in the Senate and they'll be based on stake. Uh, there, there may not be 12. Uh, some people may not come forward, but if, if um, and, and also we, we really want to pilot this aspect, which, which is that if people are not, um, if these delegates are not um, voting in the way that the, the, the crowd wants, um, that, that it, that with the delegated stake that we can effectively have a liquid democracy over top these, this voting. And it's very transparent. Um, we know who um, the people are that are making these decisions and, and they'll effectively be like politicians. Um, Allah has just disappeared. Um, the question is what will happen in the case of a tie? In the case of a tie, it doesn't go through. So we're being conservative as, as best as we can. Um, so, oh, yeah, just hey, okay. yeah. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there were some questions in the slide over, or, um, regarding the, the image network, the text-to-image network, and the text-to-video network. Um, we're not prepared to, to really push those networks until we're more confident about um, how we can manage them, how we can validate them, how we can make them safe. Um, uh, so we're not there yet. Uh, we're, it's really just a pilot. 
uh, for now. And I think it's it's a very interesting pilot. We still have some we have some amazing stuff that's being created. Really excited about. It. Uh, but not until we feel the the network on S one is more stable, uh, which could take uh, a month or two. So many people typing. A lot of Tau tokens were jumped hard on the market. Why are you not transparent about how many Tau's the total were handed to the to the to the quote unquote group? <clears throat> um, so, I I think that uh, well we don't really don't really know for sure. Uh, that's that's one problem. Um, and so we 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 don't want to give out numbers. And and also like I want to come back to this point that that um, post analysis on what happened. Um, really pointed the blame at at ourselves in terms of mechanism designers, um, not in people's ability to to optimize a system. Um, I, I don't I don't think that it would be fair to say that these tokens were stolen and I don't think it would be fair to 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 dox the individuals involved. Um, that's that's my that's my point. It's my perspective. I mean I may be wrong, um, but I, I really believe in this project's ability um, to use markets and, and I want to I'm gonna stand by that for as long as I can. Um, yeah. So, uh, what will the new code affect the requirements needed to run a validator? So, yes, we're, the, the, there are new requirements on the validator. We recommend validators upgrade to H100s um, GPUs. It's more expensive, but they'll be coming through uh, dividends. Yeah. Um, well, actually, uh, I wanted to add a little thing to what Kams was saying. Um, Flying Crypto Cat, I see your, your suggestion about running a hackathon for the first one or two weeks with the fix so that people can play around. Um, part of the White Hats push that we're doing is that we do have a, uh, a testnet. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but we do have a testnet that exists um, for Fini. And um, what we want is for people who are interested in this sort of thing to, the testnet is going to mirror, it's basically effectively going to be a mirror of the mainnet and um, run your exploits there. Get something out, show us what the exploit looks like. If it actually is something and you have a fix, we will absolutely be happy to reward you, work with the bounty and everything. If you have a yeah. validator and you're doing this, we're happy to delegate to you as well. And so we can have more longer term uh, uh, returns. That and also like the Neural Internet Bounty Program, um, please use that. If you find something, um, come to us and we'll reward you. If it's a legitimate exploit, you know, this is, I will personally reward people if they can find issues with the um, ways of gaming the system. You know, the better we can work as a as a community, the faster we can respond to these types of issues. Um, so, if if you haven't, if you have an idea for something you want to build, put it through the Neural Inter program. We're funding this. Um, propose it to us in this channel. Uh, we we really want to to bring as many de developers as we can. If you have an idea for a sub network that you'd like to build, uh, we could talk about that as well. Um, do I expect the VRAM requirements to increase? Yes, on the validators. Yes, not miners. Miners. We'll, to be we'll have more solid numbers for you as it progresses and before we launch so that everyone's yeah. more aware. Yes. Cool. Uh, I think we're at 30 minutes total const. Um, That's it. That's all we had, yeah. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we'll keep you guys posted. We'll keep announcing as we move along uh, towards the fix and uh, we will definitely keep you posted about the subnet as well. Thanks, everyone. We really appreciate all your patience with us. And it has been a really, really bumpy road. But uh, the end is in sight. We're on our way. Thank you, everyone.